colleague of mine once started his talk by saying, if I were American, I would start by telling a joke. If I were Japanese, I would start by apologizing. Given that I am English, I would start by apologizing for not having a joke. <laughs> In my case, I am Iranian-Canadian, so I thought to represent my Iranian side, I start with widely exaggerated claim, as you see on the title, and then I apologize for it to represent my Canadianness. <laughs> Clearly, you are not going to learn everything there is to know about culture in the next 15, 20 minutes that I have. Uh, but I'm going to talk about two aspects of how culture demonstrate itself, manifest itself in our everyday life uh, through communication, and to a specific one, communication in terms of insult and humor. But what is culture? It's a fuzzy concept. It is, um, it's, it's like water to fish. Um, we, are, we have difficulty defining it, especially defining our own culture, because it's all we know. Um, there are dozens of definitions has been offered by social scientists um, regarding defining culture. And this definition that I usually use, it is given by one of the pioneers in the area of cross-cultural psychology, um, Henry Triandis. He talks about it in terms of human-made part of the environment. It is the tangible aspect of our environment is what we, um, we can see, that the classroom we have built, the parks, we have the highways. Um, that's the material aspect of our culture, but it's also the subjective aspect of our culture. It is um, how we perceive our social environment, um, how we function in our families, how we perceive um, our notion of self, um, the social norms, the marital laws, the educational framework, the legal system. We learn our culture through socialization, of course. We, we are not born with this, with particular culture. There are multiple ways of uh, looking at the, examining culture, and one of, the, one of the best ways is, or one of the ways that have been studied quite extensively is through looking at um, cultural values. Values are preferences and the tendencies we have um, in our life. And again, it is instilled in us at earliest a stage of our life. Um, it tells us what is, um, what is important, what is valuable in a culture. There is a very significant value dimension that has been studied and is quite powerful in terms of examining cultural um, issues, and that's the notion of individualism, collectivism, suggested by Great Hofstede, uh, a Dutch cross-cultural psychologist. On one hand, we have individualistic societies. Canada is being one of the um, top five individualistic countries we know of. Um, in the globe. Um, and within these societies, we find that the notion of I is highly emphasized. The way we talk about um, that, the way individualism is understood, is that that um, very loose social framework where um, the person, the individual, is considered to be very important. We look after ourselves and our immediate family. The I is highlighted. The connection that we, uh, we celebrate, or the notion that we celebrate, is the notion of uh, the individuality. The, per the uniqueness is valued. Being, um, um, being autonomous um, is valued and preferred. On the other hand of this spectrum, we have the notion of collectivism, where um, it is a very tight social framework. The we is highlighted. The preference is for the individual to contribute to the notion of um, family obligation. Um, and family um, connection is highly preferred and expected. Um, 
I thought in order to illustrate this notion of individualism, collectivism, um, I would talk about two aspects uh, of um, communication, where uh, we, we see how culture plays a role in terms of social interaction we have, everyday social interaction. Two of those types are um, insult and humor. So in terms of um, um, insult, Examining verbal abuse is quite revealing in terms of, it tells us a lot about culture. Because when you look at verbal abuse, we know what aspect of a person is highly emphasized in that culture, that by denying it, we are stripping the person from those characteristics. So in an individualistic society where a person is highly valued and emphasized as u and unique, we would expect a different individualistic um, abuse or insult, verbal abuse, than in collectivistic society. I have a study to illustrate that, but uh, before, before I talk about that, that uh, this um, classical study, I would like the audience to just shout out some insult that they have heard of, or they use, or they are aware of as, as a Canadian. Could I hear a few insults, please? <laughs> what is it? Slacker, thank you. And anything else? Moron. Moron, fantastic. Um, so we have slacker, these are <laughs> stupid, Things like that. So look at some of these individualistic insults we are aware of, and the, to a large extent it is used in our culture, Canadian culture, idiot, cruel. What we are saying here, we are stripping the person from psychological characteristic that we consider to be important. We, have, we are denying a person physical characteristic, ugly, fat, that again, we celebrate in our culture. We are denying a person a notion of civility, lack of manner by saying the person is rude. We are talking about the blurring, the uh, difference between human and animal, like a pig, dirty. And of course, we have sexual insults as well. And um, these are some of those um, activities that our culture looks down on or we consider it not appropriate. This is precisely what two researchers, Italian researchers, start looking at in Italy. They looked at three different regions of Italy. The, um, the southern part, Catania, which is considered to be very um, um, collectivistic region of Italy. Um, Trieste, northern eastern part of Italy, and again, the northern part is associated to be uh, the individualistic part of Italy. Generally in Europe, the northern you get, the more individualistic you are, or the more individualistic values you hold. And they looked at uh, Bologna, central Italy, where they had, um, it is not specifically either associated with either individualistic or collectivistic. What they did, they asked participants to write a page of any insult in Italian language that they are aware of or they, are, um, they use, they have heard of. But in Trieste, what they found was that the individualistic insult that you, did, you just saw and a couple of them you, you mentioned, um, it was highly used. It was more used than another type of insult that they refer to as relational insult. This is mostly used in southern part and would be something like this. You are queer and so is your father. It is a sexual insult that is attributed to the person and others who are also highly important as, as the notion of who we are and the connection the person has. Wish a cancer on you and all your relatives. In fact, there was an insult saying that wish illness on you and 36 members of your relatives. So if there was a number inserted in there. Uh, insult, your, your um, sexual insult to the family members rather than just the target person. Talking about the, the blurring between um, animal and humanity, but, um, and uh, individual, but then talking, um, associating the person's relative 
to an animal. And of course, incestuous acts, um, which is again, um, is considered to be quite, um, quite offensive. Subsequently, we know from other studies that it's not just people in collectivistic societies that they, are, they use these more so than individualistic insult. They also find them more offensive. In a study in Hong Kong, they looked at participants, and they, um, these participants, through various tasks, they were given different types of insult. Insult that was to do with individual insult. I, you are stupid. And some of the, the other insult was, you are stupid, and I suspect um, all members of your department are stupid. And these participants, they find the second insult much more frustrating and insulting um, than, than the first one. People even show higher physiological reaction when there is a, when we make that distinction. The second uh, concept that is just shows this notion of uh, the importance of culture in our uh, social interaction is humor characteristic, um, is humor. And the characteristic um, of humor, it has been, due to its characteristic, it has been argued that it's one of the most challenging forms of communication. You, um, most of you probably, if not all of you, probably are aware that generally jokes don't translate across culture very well. Um, that's not to say there are no international jokes. Um, uh, there are some uh, humor that translates uh, internationally, and they have gained international acceptance. Mr. Bean is one of those, the visual, physical type of um, humor. It works cross-culturally. But there is something about characteristic of humor that makes it difficult to go from one culture to another. It has been suggested that the key characteristic of humor is the notion of incongruent elements. The more the two elements that in a joke we have are incongruent from what we expect to find, the funnier it is. So generally in a joke, we should expect two scripts. If these scripts go against our expectation, we find that funny. But what is interesting here is what is incongruent depends on culture. Let me illustrate this in a, in a cartoon, a far side cartoon that um, I have here is, um, they find this mildly funny. They find this mildly funny because um, here is there is one script that there are a group of scientists, they're all looking pretty nerds, wearing glasses, white coat lab, in this kind of working environment where it's just a bunch of them with all these test tubes um, there. Um, and the second assumption and uh, script that is going on is that there is a breakthrough, there is a celebration, and let's toast for that and let's have a drink. But what is funny is just the scientist drinking out of um, the um, lab tube. But we are all aware of that. We, these are the cultural assumptions we have. We don't discuss this. And that's why it's partly funny to be, we all know what is going on. But both of these assumptions, it's um, questionable don't translate well in a different culture. The first assumption, that scientists are nerds. But that's, that's something it's pretty much in most Western societies we are aware of, but that doesn't exist in, uh, in, in for example, uh, Taiwan. In Taiwan, scientists don't have the, cons the stereotype of being nerd. Rather, the group who is considered to be nerd are officers whose task is to measure hair length of high school students if they are violating the regulation for it. So already, we don't, we don't have that, that concept here. So this doesn't translate there. The second aspect is when you are celebrating, when you are having, um, um, you have a breakthrough, what you do, you open a bottle of champagne, you drink. Um, this is also questionable. In some culture, you kill a goat. You don't necessarily have a champagne. But this is also even more interesting when we are talking about humor that is to do with, with language. So the language-bound aspect of humor that makes it even more complicated than um, a visual humor such as this. I have a one-minute video to show you. 
So the Dalai Lama walks into a pizza shop. Cosa? Shop? Pizza shop. Pizza? Pizza shop, yes. Yeah, pizza. Pizza shop. And says, can you make me one with everything? Hmm. What's that? What's that? Oh, yes. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> can you make me one oh. with everything? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh. Theoretically possible. Oh. oh, I knew that wouldn't work. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it's funny even uh, on the level that a newscaster is telling a joke about Dalai Lama to Dalai Lama. That's, that's one, one aspect of this. Is anyone find this funny? But the reason that the joke is not working when it is translated to Dalai Lama, it's because, again, there are two scripts here. One is we are talking about going to a pizza shop, very specific context, using a specific language, one with everything, every topic. Well, we are all aware of that. We are coming from pizza culture. But then also, <laughs> there is... There is another script going on. This is about spirituality and enlightenment. And it's just when it is translated, that doesn't work. Yet Dalai Lama, we know he's a highly intelligent person. He would get that, but it's just the funniness of it. It uh, tends to uh, disappear. So in, um, in conclusion, the, the way people communicate with each other, it reflects um, um, our cultural orientation. Um, what we find offensive, what we find funny, what we find important in our life, what to say and what not to say, reflects what culture we come from, which we learn at a very, very early stage of uh, our socialization. And it is this cultural type diversity that worth exploring, because diversity is not something that is going to go away tomorrow. Um, and uh, the good news is we are capable of understanding that diversity. Thank you.